of raising awareness. Oh, here we go again. What did you say? I think she said, Joy, this spot is for sharing casks of fun wine. Kimberly, what is it with you with casks of wine? Is our scripture today about Jesus turning water into wine or something? I said, boy, it's hot wearing masks all at one time, but I've got to keep raising awareness. I am sure she is saying something about fun casks of wine. After all, wine is mentioned in the Bible all the time, although I don't recall it ever being called fun wine. I think she's saying something about raising. Did she say that Jesus raised the roof? Uh, with lots of fun wine? Oh my gosh. You two have a problem. While a lot of amazing things that Jesus did are recorded in the Bible, I am pretty sure there is nothing written about Jesus raising the roof with casks of fun wine. Okay, ladies, what I said was, boy, it's hot wearing masks all at one time, but I've got to keep raising awareness, not raising roofs with fun wine. I thought you were raising awareness last week about reducing the spread of COVID-19 by wearing a stack of masks whenever you were out in public or around people other than your immediate family. Mm -hmm. And that you were raising awareness about the plight of essential workers who are not being protected by their employers. Mm -hmm. And the fact that Latino and black communities have been hit very hard by COVID-19 which highlights the inequities in healthcare and the lack of access to PPE supplies. I was, but as I watched the news this week, I realized that my stack of masks awareness is definitely not done. Did you know that Los Angeles might be the largest city in the nation to enact a second stay at home order amid a surge of coronavirus cases and hospitalizations? That is not a distinction that anyone would want. Some health experts said the situation makes another stay-at-home order for Los Angeles County a real possibility if the conditions don't improve soon. And we know that this would be devastating to our already battered economy and the unemployment rate. It is going to take all of us working together to stop the rising numbers in infections, hospitalizations, and deaths and to continue to speak out and take action against the inequity facing many Latino and black communities due to systemic racism. And how that got me thinking, thinking about the gospel of Matthew, the pure in heart, the kingdom of God, and hypocrites. Hypocrites, the pure in heart, and the kingdom of God. Yep. Welcome to our virtual worship series, The Kingdom of God. I'm Pastor Lida. I'm Kimberly Emerson. And I'm Marta Lear. And we welcome you to Westchester United Methodist Church, a place where everyone is welcome and all are affirmed as beloved children of God. This is a place where love works. kingdom right here on earth, we are called to check our hearts and our actions. You are invited now to enter this time of worship and wonder, a time to center your body and mind and open your heart to the divine love that is God. Let's breathe in deeply and exhale slowly. Ever-present God, Bless us as we gather to virtually worship together. Focus our hearts, 
minds, and bodies, that we may rest in your presence. Guide our lives and our actions, that we may focus on what really matters, your teachings of compassion, love, and justice. Amen. As we shared earlier, over the next few weeks, we will continue to explore the kingdom of God. And today, we are exploring what the Gospel of Matthew had to say about the kingdom. Our readings today are from Matthew 6, verses 2 through 4, and Matthew 12, verses 33 through 35, both of which are taken this morning from, or today, we don't know what time it is today, from the Inclusive Bible Translation. When you do acts of charity, for example, don't have it trumpeted before you. That is what hypocrites do in the synagogues and the streets, that they may be praised by others. The truth is, they've already received their reward in full. But when you do acts of charity, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Your good deeds must be done in secret. And your Abba God, who sees all that is done in secret, will repay you. Make the tree healthy, and its fruit will be healthy. Neglect the tree, and its fruit will be rotten. A tree is known by its fruit. You brood of vipers! How can what you say be good when you are full of evil? Our words flow from the fullness of our heart. A good person brings good things out of a good storehouse. A bad person brings bad things out of a bad storehouse. Amen. Today, we will talk about hypocrisy. Jesus talked a lot about hypocrites in the Gospel of Matthew. According to the dictionary, a hypocrite is a person who pretends to have virtues, morals or religious beliefs, principles, etc. that he or she does not actually possess. Okay, ladies, raise your hand if you have ever encountered a hypocrite. with politicians, lawmakers, and those who are always in the public eye. I think that anytime we watch television, read the news, or surf the web, our chances of encountering hypocrites and hypocrisy are pretty good. Jesus traveled throughout Galilee, teaching in synagogues, preaching the good news of the kingdom of God, and healing people. On a day of teaching and healing, Jesus went up a mountain by the Sea of Galilee, sat down and began to speak. Jesus began his teaching not with a parable or a story, but with a list of blessings. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the gentle, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. That's an important theme of Jesus in the Gospel of Matthew, the pure in heart. So what makes us pure in heart? What does Jesus mean by pure in heart? Are hypocrites pure in heart? How is your heart? Jesus had quite a bit to say about hypocrites and their hearts. He was constantly challenged and criticized by the people who were supposed to exemplify religious behavior. And in Matthew, those people were the Pharisees. It seems as though the Pharisees were always lying in wait for Jesus just for the purpose of telling him that he was breaking the law. Jesus asked the Pharisees, how can what you say be good when you are full of evil? Our words flow from the fullness of our heart. So are you doing good stuff? Are you a paragon of virtue at work and then come home, kick the dog and scream at your loved ones? Do you declare that you are not a racist, but deny that racist laws and policies and police departments exist in this country? Your words must align with your heart, and if they don't, well, you just might be hypocritical. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. We are in the midst of a global pandemic which has highlighted racial and social inequity around the world and has brought it to the forefront of awareness in this country. 
This week, I virtually attended a lecture given by Dr. Ibram X. Kendi, who discussed his book, How to Be an Anti-Racist. Dr. Kendi is one of America's foremost historians and leading anti-racist voices, and he is also a best-selling author. He is also the Andrew W. Mellon Professor in the Humanities and the founding director of the Boston University Center for Anti-Racist Research. So the lecture started off with a quote by James Baldwin. Not everything that is faced can be changed, but nothing can be changed until it is faced. Dr. Kendi shared that denial is at the very heart of racism and we must confront it head on. We must examine our internal beliefs and our country's policies. He stated that before conversations about racism begin, it is important that we start by defining racism. When asked to define what a racist is, racist is most people say, well, it's what I'm not, which is not necessarily true and it leads to a lot of denial. Racist ideas suggest that certain people or groups are inferior. They will suggest that there is something wrong with a particular racial group or something right or better or worse with any given racial group. An anti-racist idea suggests that there is nothing wrong or right, superior or inferior about any racial group and even with their differences, they are equal. Those differences don't make a group better or worse. Those differences just make them different. If racial policies or ideas lead to inequity and injustice, then they are racist policies or ideas. An anti-racist person expresses anti-racist ideas and supports anti-racist policies. Dr. Kendi believes that as a nation, we cannot begin to process and treat systemic racism, or as he referred to it in his lecture, metastatic, metastatic, <laughs> is that metastatic? Thank you. Thank you, Kimberly. Metastatic racism. <laughs> and he said, like cancer, that diagnosis is really hard to accept, let alone hard to say, right? Americans imagine that their nation is the greatest on earth. So how could something so dire, so malignant as racism exist here when in so many other ways we are healthy? That results in the nation not treating itself or like kind of where we are now in our country. We're beginning treatment, but maybe if the treatment becomes too painful, we will stop and then we'll just imagine that we will get better all on our own. Dr. Kendi stated that there are some who still are in denial about COVID-19 and how the coronavirus is impacting communities across the nation, particularly in denial about how it is impacting communities of color. When the first coronavirus racial data came in showing that black people had a higher rate of getting infected and of dying, there was mass denial. It was believed then that black people were getting infected and dying at higher rates because black people were not socially distancing and not taking the virus seriously. But the survey data showed that black people were taking it more seriously than other racial groups. So that belief became hard to hang on to when we started seeing people who were not black demonstrating for the reopening of spaces and refusing to wear masks. So then it switched back to black people have these pre-existing conditions because they eat unhealthy foods and don't take care of themselves. I can say from my own experience, not eating healthy foods crosses all racial barriers. But studies have shown that a greater factor than pre-existing conditions is the employment status of black and brown people. Black and brown people are more likely to not be able to socially distance because of their jobs. A greater factor than pre-existing conditions is the air and water quality in black and brown neighborhoods. 
A greater factor than pre-existing conditions is a lack of access to higher quality health care. The reason for these disparities, the reason that in this moment, black people are two and a half times more likely to die of COVID-19 is racism and racist policies. The Pharisees and scribes again track Jesus down and they complain to Jesus that his disciples were not washing their hands before they eat, which might be okay if the disciples were in the middle of a pandemic, but the Pharisees point out that Jesus' disciples are in non-compliance with Jewish laws. And not only are they not washing their hands, they are eating things that they shouldn't be eating. Jesus responds to the Pharisees by first calling them, you guessed it, yeah, hypocrites, and telling all within earshot, do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth enters the stomach and goes out into the sewer? But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and this is what defiles. For out of the heart come evil intentions, murder, adultery, fornication, theft, false witness, slander. These are what defile a person, but to eat with unwashed hands does not defile. Jesus is saying, don't you get it? It doesn't matter what you're putting in your mouth. That's not what's important here. What is important is what is in your heart. What's in your heart, that comes out of your mouth. And that's what you need to be worried about. You should stop worrying about all your rules and start worrying about your intentions. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Are you spending all your time making sure that rules are enforced? Or are you taking care of the people the rules are supposed to protect and help? Are you supporting policies and practices that oppress people because of the color of their skin or their immigration status? When you hear of children separated from their families and being sexually abused in detention centers, do you deny that it is happening and, and that because they came to this country illegally, they deserve it? The Pharisees' righteousness and religious superiority were born, were worn brightly so everyone could see. But deep inside those priestly robes, their hearts were ripped and torn. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. So I ask, how are your hearts? Things aren't so very different today than they were in Jesus' lifetime. The Pharisees, who were supposed to be most righteous, were the worst in the do as I say, not as I do department. Many today, who are loudly declaring the great things they stand for and the wonderful things they are doing for the people, are living lives obsessed with power, money, racist beliefs, and denial. Even if we are not the ones making policies or writing the rules, we still need to ask ourselves if our words match our actions and whether we are racist or anti-racist. Many can chant, Black Lives Matter, but are we willing to stop benefiting from white privilege? We must challenge those in power and ask, when did it become status quo for communities not to have access to running or clean water? When did it become the status quo to accept horrific racial disparis disparities in our criminal justice system, our educational systems, and in our healthcare and economy? Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Are we seeing the kingdom of God in our words, our actions, our faith, our voting, and in our lives? Are we finally ready to face the racism in this country? How are our hearts? Amen. Jesus, we are here.
center together in this time of prayer, you are invited to take another deep breath, to find a comfortable position, and open your mind, your heart, and your hands. Pause for a moment and imagine what the kingdom of God might look like or feel like. Reflect on where you see love, justice, and welcome in action in your life or in the lives of people around you. The kingdom of God is here and now. Kingdom hearts and hands call us to intercede in prayer and in action for the healing of the world. Let us now call through our minds and our hearts those people in our lives who need our advocacy, our presence, and our prayers. As we name them, they are present with us in our hearts. You are also invited to speak aloud names or places or situations which need our prayers. For those who have lost loved ones. For those who are sick and recovering. For those who are caring for loved ones who are sick at home. For those who are caring for persons in medical care. For those who are separated from loved ones. For those who are feeling alone and isolated those who are helping and are so very tired. For those who are struggling to find friends, food, and comfort. For those who are afraid. For those who are crying out for justice. See the world through the kingdom eyes of hope and justice. If it is your custom and practice to pray the Lord's Prayer, you are invited to do so now. You are also invited to simply breathe in and send love and spirit-filled intentions to people and places in the world. God and community, holy and one, let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. some of the things that we can all do to reflect the kingdom of God right here, right now. As Dr. Kendi wrote in his book, How to Be an Anti-Racist, let's eliminate the term not racist from our vocabulary. If we eliminate the term not racist, then we are saying no matter the person's race, no matter someone's skin color, they are either being racist or anti-racist. No matter the person's skin color, they are either upholding <laughs> racism or they are challenging it. They are either saying that there is something wrong with black people or any other racial group, or they are saying that nothing is wrong with any racial group. They are either using their power to reduce racist power and policies and to resist racist ideas, or they are using their power to uphold racist policies and ideas. Take a moment at the end of each day and check in with your heart. Did your actions match your words? Did your heart reflect how much you are loved by God and how important you are to the kingdom of God? What we do now in this moment of our country's story is going to determine what our children and grandchildren will say about us. As people of faith, will we use this moment to transform this country and our churches or will we shy away from the painful solutions needed to eliminate racism? Live each day knowing that we are all beloved of God. The kingdom of God is not something we have to wait for. It's right here and right now. Put your heart into actions to bring us closer to one another while maintaining a safe distance of six feet, which I'm trying to do right now, and bring us closer to God and with God, no social distancing is required.
which were used today for this virtual worship. Our prayer liturgy was adapted from materials provided by the Worship Design Studio. Our theme song, Weaving Round, was composed by Sister Suzanne Tulin. Our prayer song, Jesus, We Are Here, is from Zimbabwe and is found in the Faith We Sing hymnal. And our closing song, Blessed Are They, is also found in the Faith We Sing hymnal. Next week, we will continue our Kingdom of God series and we will also celebrate virtual communion together. For virtual communion, you can gather whatever you may have to serve as your bread. Crackers, tortillas, a piece of bread, a roll. You can use water, juice, coffee, or tea to serve as your fruit of the vine. Know that grace will be with your choices in the sight of God. The table is open and all are welcome. Care for yourself. Care for others care for the world, and continue to work for equality and justice. This is the kingdom of God. We can do it as long as we work together. Wonderful week, and don't forget, be safe and wear just one mask.